Lord, we stand with our brethren across the nations of the world. And we stand in faith to make proclamation that the siege indeed is broken and we are escaped. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. Turn your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26 will begin a reading from verse 52. And in keeping with the gravity of the issues of this season, I would like to do a brief teaching, the ministry of prayer and the ministry of angels. Matthew chapter 26 from verse 52 and 53. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for there that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot pray my father? And he will presently give me more than 12 legions, legions of angels. There is a relationship between prayer and the ministry of angels. But it's needful for you to know that in the Old Testament, the armies that fought on the side of Israel were not just human functionaries. There was an invincible, angelic aspect of the armies of Israel. Hallelujah. And so when Joshua was going to take on Jericho, God had to give him some understanding. After that, he had considered the embankments of the walls, and in, uh, he had uh, discovered that the wall of Jericho was a cuboid, and it was a military engineering feat that was designed never to be breached. And when the warriors saw how fortified the nation of Jericho was, he went on a retreat to meditate because it was an impossibility. He would need something more than tactics and tricks to take on Jericho. And in the midst of his meditation, God allowed him to design the captain of the angelic side. Now, you see, this was an education that God was willing to give his general on the field of battle so that he will understand that the fights and the wars we engage are wars that are in partnership with the angelic kind. Unfortunately for Joshua, he did not understand the protocol that was required in order for him to fully interface uh, with the angelic sequence to bring about a corporate victory he still saw them as another side and he questioned the captain of the angelic side are you for us or are you against us that was like a political thing are you in my party do you share my persuasions are you convinced that uh, I am on the right side, it was political. And the angel said, nay, I am not for you. Neither am I against you. But my marching orders are simple. As a captain of the Lord's army, am I come. I have marching orders from the king in glory. And if by any means I see you uh, doing something that is related to my marching orders, I will become your partner. And if by any means I find you violating my marching orders, you might become the first to suffer by uh, my abilities. Now, so he, that scripture gives us a little insight on the fact that angels are only commanded by the Father. Angels are only commanded by the Father. And there is something that Jesus said here. He said, I would pray the Father and he will send me more than 12 legions of angels. It means that the prayer ministry of the church is supposed to create a ground 
for angelic commands to be given by the Lord to release angels to come partner with us in the actualization of the program of God. In the book of Acts chapter 10, I'd like you to turn again. Now, if you are not careful, you would think that uh, me and the barrister had a consultation before he chose the scriptures he used um, for the prayers he just led. He, he was in the spirit because that was what God put upon my heart, the, the, the partnership between the prayer ministry of the church and the ministry of angels because there are several situations that transcend the natural we need to introduce something that is supernatural to be able to engage situations at that level the wall of jericho for instance was an engineering feat it was built not to be breached but you see in the partnership of men and angels on the final day of execution after they had marched around the wall seven times there was some some form of synchronization between the human armies and the angelic armies and when they shouted the angels stood around the wall and stamped the wall in and the wall sank that was how a passageway was created to secure the victory over jericho it was a partnership between men and angels and in these times as the world becomes more supernatural as darkness seeks to secure an edge, to secure a handle over the earth, to manipulate the destinies of nations and men, it will be necessary for us to understand how to engage in order to receive spiritual reinforcement to back us as we go about establishing the purposes of God upon the face of the earth. In the book of Acts chapter 10, if you turn with me to verse number one to verse number four you are going to see an unbeliever someone that is not by any means connected to the covenant he is doing something here in the book of acts chapter 10 from verse one there was a certain man in caesarea called cornelius a centurion of the band called the italian band a devout man and one that feared God and all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He was in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day. An angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius, when he looked on him he was afraid and said what is it Lord and he said unto him thy prayers and thy arms have come for a memorial before God now this man was not an Israelite and the prayers that the Bible captured that he was praying I don't even know what kind of prayers and in what name he prayed hallelujah I say hallelujah I don't know how, or maybe he attended uh, a meeting somewhere, saw someone praying, and he got some, some, some few clues from that point and formulated a, a means of communication. He himself was in doubt if his communication was ascending into the sanctuary of heaven. It would take an angel to give him insight that those prayers you were praying, it did not only ascend into heaven, but it became a memorial. It became something that was so evident in the presence of god that god could not overlook it god was compelled to act on the basis of the prayers that were prayed it, it's it's as if when we send prayers on high we create an atmosphere for god to send reinforcement from heaven and that's what we see here and we must understand that when we fight even though we it may seem that you are alone sometimes uh, you actually fight with the possibilities of reinforcement from many forces. Hallelujah. Now, I want to take us through a few things. I don't know how much time will be allowed for the little exposition I intend to bring to facilitate our prayer meeting as we pray 
that the hand of God will come upon the nations and that the activities of the kingdom of darkness will be brought to an abrupt halt at this time in the name of Jesus. First of all, I noticed in the book of Acts of the Apostles, this is my number one, that there was a prayer culture that was established among the brethren. And upon investigation, you will find out that um, angelic visitations were consistent with prayer times. Now, um, this Cornelius we read about, are you still with me? Oh, you're not with me. You're not with me. Cornelius that we read about, let us find out what was the time he had the encounter. Can somebody help me out quickly? What was the time? Hmm? At the ninth hour. All right. Let's do Acts chapter 3 verse 1. Acts chapter 3 verse 1. There is something about what we call set prayer times. If you are going to be someone whose prayer ministry, prayer initiatives, your prayer endeavors is going to attract angelic reinforcement. There is a principle that I find in the book of Acts of the Apostles that you can adopt. In Acts chapter 3 from verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the what? Uh, the ninth hour. There were so many hours but the hour of prayer, the set time for prayer was the ninth hour. And when did Cornelius have his encounter? Uh, Cornelius' encounter was consistent to a prayer parallel that was opened by the brethren. The brethren had set the ninth hour to be the prayer time. And it was a consistent spiritual endeavor that they sustained over time. And then it was no longer a coincidence that the angelic encounters that a man like Cornelius would have subsequently was on the platform of that same time. And the first thing that I have noticed as I studied the book of Acts of the Apostles, prayers and angelic encounters all through the book was either by 9 o'clock or by 6 o'clock or, you know, the day of Pentecost. Do you remember the day of Pentecost when Peter was giving a discourse and trying to explain to them that what you see here is a download from heaven, is a release from heaven that is consistent with the prophecy of Joel. And he, he refuted the claim of the religious people that were trying to bring some disrepute on the move of God. And they were claiming that the apostles were actually drunk. His defense in response to that misconception was that this was just the ninth hour. May the Lord give you understanding. So the heavens were, was rained and the Holy Ghost descended from heaven at a very, at a, the ninth hour. And that hour is quite understood to be the set time of prayer. Now, so if you are a believer and you have a consistent set time of prayer, that nothing will make you violate it's quite, it's quite, it's quite, um, you are going to have, you are likely to have angelic reinforcement and support around the times of your set prayer times. When prayer becomes regimented, you know, you will pray by 4 p.m. and nothing will stop you from praying by 4 p.m. You pray by 12 midnight and even if it rains and your things are, are wet outside, you will still keep your prayer time. If nothing can stop you from engaging a set prayer time, then there is a great possibility that you are going to interface and your prayer endeavors is going to compel, by God's response, it will compel angelic intervention. And it will no longer just be prayer of words, but miracles, signs, wonders, will take place. Things that are beyond human capacity will begin to take place on the strength of your prayer. And you must also take note, take note that the piece of scripture that we read in the book of Acts 23 
uh, that set time can be personal and that set time can be corporate. You see, for those of us that um, once and again have had reason to be away from the general fellowship uh, when you know there is another assignment somewhere and then our prayer schedules are going on we normally sense the anointing around the time that prayers rise from here now irrespective of what time zone you are if you calculate the real time zone time equivalent to the times that prayers are going on here i have experienced that once and again before irrespective of time zones then you understand that there's something about prayer that links people there are people that i've met before that i thought that i knew i've met them somewhere and when we investigated i have not met them before but there are people that your prayers have ministered to without your knowledge and when you meet them it might seem that you know them but you see you know them in the spirit not in the natural and when you conduct your investigation you just find out that there's been no physical contact whatsoever but the sense of familiarity is so strong and you are wondering what happened when the lord began to teach me about some spiritual things and how spiritual processes take place and how that god uses us not just in the natural but god also uses us in the supernatural then some of those things began to um, make sense but there was a culture among the apostles which was critical and that culture was praying at set times it was a trigger to the supernatural it became a trigger to angelic reinforcement hallelujah second point acts chapter 12 from verse 1 acts chapter 12 from verse 1 is the same scripture that Ogbe read but i would like us to see the technology that is at work here now about that time herod stretched forth herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church and he killed james the brother of john with the edge of the sword and because it pleased the jews he proceeded further to take peter also then were the days of unleavened bread and when he apprehended him he put him in, in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after easter to bring him forth to the people and peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto god that's the technology the first technology we have seen is praying at a set time that if we set three o'clock to be our prayer time sister gift will not see be doing something that she feels is more important than that prayer i will not be found doing something that i feel is more important than that prayer i will pay the price to make sure that we keep the covenant of a set prayer time that kind of arrangement can trigger angelic activity then the second arrangement that the the people of god had in the book of acts was the prayer chain system because if you are saying that prayers were made without ceasing for peter by the church it means that there was a continuous prayer cycle that means um, a set of people come they pray from this time to this time a set of people come they take from that time to this time so that kind of arrangement was going on it was an endless chain of prayer stream and the the, um, the streams of prayer were being poured out and demands were being made to heaven concerning the release of peter concerning the the emancipation of peter as those rivers of prayer were coming out were going forth were coming out and the church insisted god had no choice but to send an angel and the type of angel that he sent was not the ordinary type uh, the presence of the angel alone ministered damage to the chain and to the fetters the only time the angel had to speak was to tell peter to put on his, his garment 
for the gates, for the chains, for the soldiers, there was no need for an utterance. His presence alone could handle human entities and even the iron gate of the city. There was an engineering feat. He, he gave way. The angel didn't say anything. His presence was sufficient to manipulate all of those things that were put in place to provide containment. Now we have a situation of uh, self-isolation and uh, social distancing which is like the prison that uh, Peter was confined to and in order for him to be released uh, the church had to demand the release of the supernatural they knew that the kind of chain the kind of stocks the kind of fetters that he was bound with it would take something uh, supernatural to change that situation and the church in order for them to pray that consistently fundamentally they believed in the supernatural then they began to make demands on heaven it was a prayer without season the first strategy was praying at set times this strategy was an interventionist strategy that came when there was a, a situation that was a terrible situation that would defy every human effort then they began to do what was called chain prayer hallelujah i remember those days i was a member of a church and then our choir leader had an accident and he his spinal cord was injured and you know what that means he became paralyzed and he could not eat and then suddenly the pastor came and said we are going to go for chain prayers for seven days do you know so that means a set comes and prays for three hours another set comes and prays for three hours another set comes and prays for three hours and by the fourth day you know the first day it was a drag the second day it was a drag that's how god is uh, he he may allow you attempt it in the flesh for some time hmm? and it's so difficult he's testing your resolve and then when you insist then he begins to pour grace out then it starts becoming easier and sweeter it becomes a delight and on the fourth day you you, you were people that were even praying beyond their three hours and a grace was being enlargement was taking place and it came to pass on the sixth day an angel visited that pastor and uh, you know and manipulated the spinal cord and fixed it back and there was a loud crack and he discovered that movement was restored and when that crack took place he you know he lost his appetite all these days he became a voracious consumer of delicacies <laughs> a supernatural thing has taken place because the doctor had already come with his verdict that given the parts of the spinal cord that were compromised the possibility of him walking normally was out of the question now we are just looking at maintaining him and getting him to probably stay alive and uh, just sit by but you see we contradicted the doctor and all his learning he's an expert in bones and alignments and his learning obviously even though it was the best in the city at the time it it only spelled doom for the pastor then prayers were made you see in 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 the situation where Oh, the, the strategy that was used was chain prayers, unending prayers. He didn't say that they prayed prayers, he said they made it. So when we engage the uh, prayer chain profile, it is, it is making of prayer, not praying prayer. It is making. Prayers were made by the church. So we made prayers concerning that pastor, and there was an encounter. And the encounter was so marvelous his spinal cord was rearranged and and he came back to his feet and everything was restored in seven good days seven days of pouring out when we become angry hallelujah i believe that everything anything is possible when we become angry and we decide that we want to respond the way to respond is chain prayers when we come to the point where we are pressed to the wall and we want to say enough is enough the way to do it 
his chain prayers and we will not stop until the god of heaven makes himself manifest and every time the church rose that way what they prayed about became an easy thing because what god normally does is that he sends his angel there was a time in nigeria when we had a tyrant as a king and this tyrant did all kinds of damage and uh, he was working strong and the church was pressed to the wall and prayers were made <laughs> hallelujah prayers were made this king i speak about was the most fortified he he was someone that loved the honor of protocol when you see him in the midst of his military garrison and cover you will know that uh, he is a king indeed he was a man that was very proud and it came to pass that prayers were made and all of us i mean most of us here know what i'm talking about prayers were made in lagos state alone night vigils and prayer cycles and prayer systems were put in place and it came to pass that something supernatural happened in the privacy of his defense he was struck till today there is no autopsy result there is no disclosure of what could fall a competent combatant personality like himself but it's not everything that the doctors can explain there was an intervention because heaven released the supernatural to come respond to the situation so every time we are saying as the church enough is enough we resort to chain prayers have we done that here before many times so you see the the, the point is uh, we have survived as a people we have survived as a ministry because of that golden key many times satan rose up there were terrible seasons that came upon us i remember those days is um, how many years ago now 10 years ago 10 years ago a certain woman that used to come for fellowship now ran to my house in the afternoon one of those days and she was panting i said what's the problem she said you are finished that is me now that me me this me now is finished what's the problem you are finished you are finished oh my god i don't look finished so what's the problem well she said somebody invited her to church and she took her bible and accompanied the woman to go to the church somewhere not not bank and when she got to the place then she realized that she was in a shrine and um, because she she didn't know the consequences that will find expression if she decides to walk away maybe she will become an object of attack so she decided to um, submit to that session of proceedings in the shrine there was a very notable feature in that shrine that she could not forget you know those days when we started the ministry we um we used to do handbills you remember handbills okay so one of the things she saw on the altar of the shrine was our handbills the ones that had my pictures and according to her according to the friend that brought her to church which became a shrine yeah church shrine now according to that friend this priest never misses his target so obviously what happened is that someone had taken my uh, photograph to the shrine to report me or something that the guy should deal with my case and so that's why this woman ran to me and said you are finished you are finished you are finished but you see unknown to the woman we were making prayers we made <laughs> we made prayers we made prayers we made prayers hallelujah the only thing i noticed was that uh, many of my friends that were good friends in the period of seven years became enemies all right uh, but we made prayers and after seven years we broke out of that uh, limitation those well I, I lost good friends but uh, the devil could not stop what we we're doing uh, the season we passed through only made us stronger because we made prayers if you make prayers 
the very thing that the devil is afraid of will eventually come to pass. We made prayers. Uh, we made prayers. If, uh, if the woman was still here, would have sent her back to check if that shrine is still operational. Because if you make prayers, what God does is that he sends an angel that is competent, that the angel that is specialized for that kind of duty. If you see the kind of angel that ministered to Peter, you will know he's specialized with chains, issues of chains and fetters. Yeah. Because when he showed up there, chains and fetters gave way of their own accord. So, the second strategy of the apostolic church was um, making prayers. And what I mean by that is unending streams of chain prayers. Number three, I want to invite you to the book of Luke chapter... Are you there? In Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22 from verse 43. Luke 22 verse 40. 1 to 43 41 to 43 who is there and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed next verse saying father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but thine be done yes go on and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. That means there are times in our prayer initiatives, in our prayer endeavors, where there are certain marks that heaven sets that we will need to reach in order for heaven to respond. And in those circumstances, when it is obvious that our capacity, maybe because of sorrow, maybe because of depression, maybe because of the weight of the challenges that you know happening around us when god sees that we don't seem to have the capacity to reach that mark he has a reinforcement policy that he puts in place uh, such as what happened to jesus and an angel appeared unto him and did what answer now most of you you need to be a very good student of your spiritual life if you are a very good student, if you are sensitive to the way God deals with you, especially when you are in the place of prayer, you should be able to know when there is a supernatural strength that is beyond your strength that begins to flow in your vessel. For me personally, for me personally, when I begin to pray and God is giving me supernatural strength, I feel as if there is an oil that is poured on my head. All right. When the barrister was leading prayer here, and he struck that first point then i felt the oil god was strengthening my spirit he had released one of his minions to strengthen me and it, it comes to me with a feeling as if oil is poured on my head there are many supernatural things that happen to us when we begin to engage the spirit realm when we begin to utilize the abilities that is warehoused in our spirit when you start praying when you start worshiping when you start um, speaking in tongues, when you are in battle, many spiritual things take place. A lot of traffic finds expression. And most, more often than not, when that kind of support system takes place, it leaves a feeling, a physical feeling that you can relate to it. Because God wants you to be a student of his dealings. He wants you to know what is happening. And many times when some anointings are in oppression in your life, God allows you to have a sign because spiritual things are announced by signs. And if you understand the meaning of the signs, you will know how to yield adequately in order for the errand of that um, ordination uh, to come to pass in its full extent. Now, so Jesus had an experience in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the experience was that an angel came and what? And strengthened him. All of these partnerships we are seeing, prayer is the common denominator that facilitates 
this level of partnerships. Prayer is the common denominator. And as I preach and as I uh, speak to all of us that are listening to me online, the Lord is calling the church of Jesus to that ministry that is revealed in the prayer, in the statement that Jesus made when he said that my house among all nations uh, shall be called the house of prayer. For so long, we have not had that identity. Uh, but the point is, uh, that is supposed to be the observation when an unbeliever looks at us. What he should call us is that a, a house of prayer, a people of prayer. My house shall be called. That is what I should be, my people should be identified with and what, that's what my people should be identified by. And the situations on ground calls for that level of engagement where the house of God once again will be known as a house of of prayer and if we truly become a house of prayer that means we solve problems by prayer that means we, our response to catastrophe is prayer that means our strategy is prayer our way of life is prayer if that truly becomes our modus operandi then angelic partnerships angelic reinforcements angelic strengthenings angelic interfaces will be a normal part of our spiritual experience. Hallelujah. Now, I would like us to read the book of Mark. You know, Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. Then the devil leave it him this is when jesus was tempted of the devil in the book of matthew chapter 4 after the baptism of jesus in john the baptist baptismal service jesus's identity was revealed uh, the witnesses of heaven came to bring perspective it was like an accreditation encounter and heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And when that proclamation came from heaven, the leading that came after that great exposition was that the Jesus will have to go to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And the account of the temptation is in the book of Matthew chapter 4, beginning from verse 1. And there were three levels of temptations that the devil brought which touched every fiber of Jesus's being and if there was anything in Jesus that was not submitted to God Satan would have found occasion to take advantage of that isolated loose end to set Jesus up and to defeat him in the wilderness but it came to pass after attempts after attempt after attempt after attempt the devil could not find any part of Jesus that was not absolutely surrendered to the authority of his father. And so there was no ground to trade. There was no ground to begin. And when that victory was secured, Jesus had an experience that I would like to draw attention to. And the experience that he had was in the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 11. Can you put that scripture on the screen? The devil liveth him. We know it was Jesus that testified and said that the prince of this world, he cometh, but he found nothing in me. Oh, he it it was testifying about what took place in the wilderness. Satan came and found nothing. And then, because there was no ground to trade, there was no ground of compatibility, Satan had to leave. There was nothing he could anchor his tricks upon. There was nothing he could anchor his plans upon. So he had to reschedule the temptation exercise for a future time. And when he left, the Bible says that angels came and did what? And ministered unto him. This was a great victory that was won. There are several times when you win victories in the house of God. Angels. Angels. There are several things that makes heaven rejoice. One of which is 
when his soul turns to the Lord, then heaven, heaven, heaven does what? Heaven rejoices. But this rejoicing that I speak about in the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 11 is a rejoicing that heaven comes to do upon the face of the earth. When grounds, possible grounds that were likely to have been considered to the enemy because of your failure, when those grounds, because of your resilience and your commitment to God, are kept in store under God's custody, hmm, Lord sends angels to minister to you. To minister to you. Now, when I study the scriptures, you find the issues of angelic intervention and angelic ministration were weaved into every victory that the church secured. And so, the life of a believer, his natural life, is supposed to be simply supernatural. That means if we make prayer one of the heavy molecules of our estate, then the supernatural will become natural. And then the natural will become supernatural. Then we, 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 our life will be like the life of Israel in the land of Goshen. So much so that when the angel of death comes to pay a visit, comes to knock on the doors, comes to enter into the palace of the dreaded king, when the angel of death, we could see that the angel of death had no respect for Pharaoh because he paid him a visit also. In this day, darkness has been unleashed. And we have seen this angel of death defy thrones, defy monarchs, defy kings. We have seen it kiss even the mighty among men and contaminate their blood. At a time like this, we need angels to minister to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finally, as I try to round up, because I'm trying to stay your feet. And I address all people listening to me at this time, at this time of panic, at this time of pandemic. And, and people don't believe anything anymore. And many people have put their confidence in hand sanitizers when demons go on rampage. Hallelujah. The Lord calls us to the place of prayer. It calls the global church to the place of prayer. The response we are supposed to present at this time is a response of prayer. We are supposed to begin to build the altar of the Lord that was once fallen by setting set times for prayer. By engaging in cyclical prayer change that are uh, orchestrated to move the hand of God. And when great grounds are secured for God, many more times he sends angels to minister unto us. I will never forget. A simple preacher of the gospel. Hallelujah. Went somewhere in southern Africa, a nation in southern Africa to preach the name of Jesus and we got to that place and the kind of expectation was so high the the people came from various lands to that ground where we held uh, the meeting and um, there was so much faith then I realized why there was so much faith it was because there was no health care plan for the communities of the hinterland and the way healing and, uh, and cures were effected was when a man of God comes into the environment. And so the faith of the people was high. Not because they, they, they preached faith to them. It was because that was the only option that was available. So if a native doctor comes and he presents a, an elixir that has the capacity to bring healing, then we worship his God. If the, the gospel evangelist comes and he has a way of doing away with their ailments and doing away with their infirmities, they will follow his God. In such communities, it was about power. It was a God that has capacity, not a God that was hidden in a book, but a God that could come out of a book and answer to, to HIV, an answer to asthma, an answer to, to, to paralysis. And so hallelujah <laughs> so on the field that night you need to see how many crutches were stretched out people in wheelbarrows seeking god hallelujah then i knew that this was not 
a situation for a preacher. This was a situation for the great monarch himself. So I had to call our base back home and say, you know what? Make prayers. <laughs> make prayers. And what I mean by making prayers is prayer chain. Let the river of prayer pour out. Let God have no choice. Let the prayers appear before him as a memorial. And as prayers poured. Prayers poured. For the first time in my life, I've never been that anointed. And the hand of God broke out. And it broke out so strong that the local witchcraft court, which was revered in the community, when I mentioned their name, and, and I, I didn't know that it was not customary for you to mention the name of that witchcraft group. Because if you do, they will answer. That means as we were holding crusades, they were part of us. It was a community thing. So they had a right to be part of it. And then I mentioned the name because when I go into a community that I'll have to use an interpreter. There are two words I must learn how to pronounce myself. And the first word is witchcraft. We need the local name in the dialect of the people. Witchcraft. <laughs> and in that case, the name for witchcraft was Nyao. <laughs> Hallelujah. So a time will come in my delivery where I will not need the interpreter. I will have to say the word in the local dial. And the place went on rampage. Because the members of the court came to the defense of their altar. That was like Kamel. When Elijah had to face the prophets of Baal. They, they came to fight the preacher. And I was taught by my teachers. At any time there's a confrontation and people want to come and kill you using supernatural power, never allow them to do all the work. If they are coming from the back, make sure you help them and meet them in the middle. Don't allow them to do all the work. That act of faith to go in the name of the Lord compares the jealousy of God and he sends reinforcement. The reinforcement that heaven sent that day was so powerful. That darkness was subdued. In fact, after those people came down and vomited all kinds of stuff because they were delivered, the news went to the headquarters. We were five hours away from the headquarters by road. And delegates, seven delegates were dispatched from the headquarters to come see this gospel preacher that was able to subdue the power of Nyao. It was reinforcement. Forces interceptions and interactions took place when we make prayer nothing not even chains and fetters can stand in our way when we make prayer not even the iron gate of self-isolation and social distancing can stop us can stand in the way that will give way of his own accord because prayer triggers the supernatural and things that happen are beyond what we pray for but the bible says that god is able to do exceeding abundantly above that which we can ask or think i went into that nation like a preacher and i left like a king because angels ministered unto me may the lord help us in the name of jesus and finally in the book of daniel chapter 9 from verse 20 and 21 you remember the prayer of daniel he took a 21 days prayer and fasting moment and he was not praying for himself he was praying for an entire nation and i was wondering how the prayer of one man could influence a nation and the nation he was praying about was a nation that was already in captivity and he was one of the victims of the captivity because he was castrated think about it you were taken captive and part of the protocols of captivity was for you to be castrated it means the hope of having children was not part of your possibilities but he still had a heart that was healed of all his personal challenges and he could bend the knee to pray it was the sacrifices that he had to go through in order for him to raise an altar that made his voice honored before heaven. And as Daniel bent the knee, 
in a 21 days of affliction just to secure the intervention of God in the book of Daniel chapter 9 are you there in verse 20 and whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God next verse yea while I was speaking in prayer even the man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly touched me about the time of the evening oblation that's the time of the evening prayer and he informed me and talked with me and said oh Daniel I am now come to give thee what skill and understand <laughs> what we see here is an educational system that was being inaugurated and in order for Daniel's priesthood to be cutting edge for him to know how to pray the kind of prayers that will um, uh, cause angelic reinforcement prayers that will be so potent to manipulate the atmosphere of the second heavens where the minions of ranking satanic spirits were i need to give you skill there's a way you need to pray that will help us tomorrow we are going to talk about spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places and before news is made there is politics in the unseen realm what determines who rises and who falls who becomes king and who dies on the throne is not determined in the place of census and polling it is a matter of spiritual politics and if if the church oh my oh my god oh my god the lord calls us he calls us because I, I i sense heaven open i sense the hand of god so strong it's as if the holy spirit is saying when will you cry when will you call because the moment daniel began to speak that that general that angelic uh, prince even gabriel used to appear to him in dreams before to bring the educational system it was that was evening school evening school used to take place but the level of terror that had you know assuaged the spirit realm was so intense and and then gabriel couldn't wait for daniel to sleep again while he was still speaking gabriel flew swiftly and said oh daniel your voice is ringing in heaven you are highly favored it is because of your voice that i am sent to give you skill and understanding there are several wars that you don't even have the capacity to fight because you are not educated enough but if you are consistent daniel was consistent for 21 days he was able to secure favor from heaven and in response to his favor gabriel was sent to educate him i have come to give you what skill and understand the content of our lecture for tomorrow is is the um scheme of work that gabriel brought to educate daniel in order to bequeath to him skills and understanding and in the book of daniel we saw the partnership how angels depend on the prayers of the saints in order for them to be able to do warfare in the galaxies whenever you see the hand of satan stretch forth it means the prayers of the saints have waned awake awake oh arm of god i have come to give you what skills and understanding many years ago you must have heard me share this story before a warlock from my family was trying to cut every one of my father's children down and the battle was so fierce and there was a time window that that gave satan the opportunity to strike it's as if they consulted an altar and by divination they knew 
that the only window that will be available for the affliction was when we arrive at the age of 21 and so when you arrive 21 something terrible happens to you the kingdom of darkness comes to visit with you and it was so consistent from the first born, from the second born, from the third born, from the fourth born. And I happened to be the fifth born. When I saw the science and how faithful Satan was in bringing about a visitation at the age of 21. And then I guess I was 16 years. I had five years to go. So I had time to prepare. I learned how to pray in the night and to pray angrily. And to pray even when you are tired. And it came to pass when I was 21, I had admission in the university. 12 midnight. I was running to the place of prayer because we had the prayer meeting for 12 to 1. And suddenly, an owl appeared. And he wanted to stand on my head. And I hit it. And when I hit it, that's when I discovered it, it wasn't a natural bed because it just went back. And I wanted to come again. It was as if the size was increasing. And the Holy Spirit whispered to me, skills, eh? And understand. He whispered. He said, if you fear, you die. There are many times we are not equipped enough to fight. But God has a facility through which He gives us what? Skills and what? Understand. If you fear this time, you die. You feared before. You survive but now if you fear today you die so i had to close my eyes because the fear was related to what i was seeing so i closed my eyes and spoke in tongues in capital letters after 15 minutes i opened my eye i saw that his one of his wings was broken he was trying to fly with one he couldn't make it i said okay he's walking i released missiles it was a bear that was contending with but three days later it was a man that died and when that man died peace came i'm not saying go kill people but you see you cannot understand what happened there without an angel that was released as i was praying and thinking i was contending with the bed the personality that did the ultimate damage to the warlock was not a man because this guy woke up early in the morning he stood before in between his door and then he fell face forward three days later no one hurt him he was not sick he was not afflicted he just died because life was taken from him i have served god enough and i've seen the supernatural enough to tell you a few things there is an angel that is suited for any impossible challenge and if we can pray enough heaven will release him if we have not prayed enough it means we have another alternative that's why we have not prayed enough but if we get to that point where we pray enough there will be a release of this reinforcement just like the angel came the one that was suited for chains and fetters when he came he didn't need to speak the chains gave way and the intimidating great city of confinement gate of his own accord i can imagine that when the guys were making the gate they thought they were doing something it was an embankment a bulwark <laughs> but when the right angel showed up he gave way on his own accord there is a call to prayer for the church global those of you that have retired from the ways of intercession there is a call for you to re return dust your prayer mat and let us practice prayer as a global church again and you will see how naked the devil is when the devil was to be confiscated it was not a horde of angels that went there was a particular angel that was suited for binding satan we never knew that until the end of the book the angel came with a key and with a chain. He didn't come with a sword and a shield as you would expect. Heavily loaded with a shin guard. He came with only two apparatus. A key and what? And a chain. May the angel of chains rise from the very heart of heaven. And may the minions of darkness 
be bound. Let us pray. Remember the prayer of Jesus. Yesterday we prayed.